Coming up, another installment of Confessions from a Sugar Daddy. Are sugar babies expected to have sex? We'll talk about that right now on The Praise and Debauchers. Welcome back to the program. This is King of Podcasts and another installment of Confessions of a Sugar Daddy. So if you missed the first installment of this, this is where I get to speak with someone who is remaining anonymous, who is an active sugar daddy, who has spent time in person, virtually, with various sugar babies, and has spent money, and has done various things with sugar babies, the full experience. And understanding, for the most part, the mindset of many sugar babies, which can be ranged from between 18 years old to late 30s, almost 40 years old. And I want to go ahead and bring him back onto the program. Of course, we're going to be disguising his voice for anonymity reasons. I want to welcome back our resident sugar daddy expert, JL, back to the program. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks again for having me. All right, JL, I want to go ahead and take a story that's coming up from The Guardian about a month ago they put out a story about a lady named Lottie Latham and the fantasy of sugar dating where she talks about quote they don't want you to be a sex worker they just want to pay you for sex so there is that very thin line that goes along with guys that are doing pay for play with a girl or just finding a girl that would just be maybe an escort or a prostitute. And look, I mean, we're not here to judge anybody that wants to do whatever they are. This is why the show Depraved and the Debauchers has the name. But the idea is that there are sex workers out there and there are those that are amateurs that women that just need a helping hand and they're, you know, down on their luck and they're willing to do something where they're willing to give their bodies up to make money off of it. To make money for themselves, whatever it might be. It could be, you know, to pay for rent pay for whatever kind of bills for some when they get to a point where if they are dependent upon alcohol or drugs then it becomes a thing where it's just like and now it's just selling your body just to go and get the next score get the next drink or just find a place to a hotel to stay just to go ahead and party again it gets to that point so what can you tell me jail about the idea that there are women out there that are looking on these sugar daddy sites that prior not aware of the fact that there might be a distinction, a thin line between being just a sugar baby and a sex worker. Well, I read the story, and what happens is there are some girls that don't want to look at the idea of being a prostitute or a sex worker or having the idea it looks like she's a stripper or she's working and all that she's good for is sex. A lot of these young girls want to be looked at that way. They're college students. They're starting off with their job, but they're fresh out of college. They have student loans, so they have debt, and they've been left maybe in a bad relationship that really put them underwater in bills and student loans, and they really can't pick themselves back up from them. Plus, being independent, not having a boyfriend, not having someone to be with. Plus, the idea of what a girl wants to go ahead and get spoiled and wants to have something where it's whatever kind of designer clothes or jewelry or whatever it is where it's just spending money just to spend money it is the idea where a high priced prostitute or a sex worker would do the exact same thing except they want to go ahead and live that kind of life without doing the part so there's this delusion now of a lot of younger women that are modern and they think well you know they have such beauty privilege that they don't have to worry about getting laid if a guy wants to fuck them they're not going to get to do it because the girl thinks they can go and hold off and they don't have to do anything for it but that's a delusion now and there are a number of sugar bees that think they can do that and that's what Lottie Latham brings up GL and so she talks about now she was working as a window dresser in London's Nightbridge area and saying that management that's talking about that there are prostitutes operating around the building including the area where there's a ground floor champagne or oyster bar and that you should report suspicious behavior to your line manager if you would it's anything unusual. So the, one of the things she talked about is a hypocrisy. Assuming that we would aspire to the luxury retail, but no one would ever be able to afford anything on their salaries unless they were doing sex work on the side. So the idea is that there's an overlap with sugar dating. 
because of the sheer number of men that she saw flexing their credit cards for younger dates. Now, she actually said she did try to be a sugar baby with a sugar daddy, and sugar dating was something that she tried for a few years, but she realized that she preferred to work as an escort and be paid fair and square. So part of the things that she actually said was, quote, sugar apps exist in this gray zone, saying they don't endorse money transactions while saying you could earn $2,000 a month off of it. Now, Latham is a London-based artist whose art house videos are shown for European festivals. And she tried sugar dating in 2015 and that the scene right now has reached a saturation point, she says. She says, I've heard of there being 25 women to every man. Well, there are more providers, there's higher competition, and people trying to barter you down on prices, saying, my last girl did this, which you can't verify. My last appointment was with a guy trying to do a try before you buy a blowjob in the back of his car. She finds the language of sugar dating, pampering, sponsor, mutually beneficial relationships, deeply disingenuous. What do you think about that? Lottie's a pro. She gets it. She's not delusional. She understands deeply disingenuous is a really good term because these girls are doing the bare minimum to get what they want from this and the guys that are getting a part of this they're going to as sugar daddies try to say there are so many other girls that are available to them that these girls need to do a little more above and beyond to compete and to do less do for less than they would get so some of these girls will be naive and will go ahead and take less than what they're expected because they feel like, well, if there's not another sugar daddy for me, I might as well get what I can get from him and hopefully he'll reward me later. And that happens a lot of times. But Lottie is kind of about right. She became a sex worker. She says, well, she didn't like the fake hypocrisy, this sanctimonious bullshit that goes on with sugar babies that they feel like they don't have to do anything for sex. But the truth is, all sugar daddies, if they're not something, there's maybe some other reason, maybe there are a couple of sugar daddies that are much older, they're not looking for sex, they're just looking for companionship. Sure, there might be something like that happening, but for the most part, if your sugar daddy is not getting sex from you on somewhat regular basis, and you're getting allowance from them, that's not going to last long, and that's not normal. Because most sugar daddies, let's just say it as it is, they're looking to get fucked. They want sex. Now, she also talks about codified things like, I don't want a professional. So they don't want you to be a sex worker. They just want to pay you for sex. This is the part she talks about here. Because of the fact that they want to have someone that is not a pro. Now, that's actually, that's, that's not a wrong point to say. Is that right? No, it's not. Because she is saying the fact that the guys want amateurs. They don't want a girl that's a pro that's going to charge them and that's going to be straight up with them. So it's just a straight negotiation. There's no kind of emotion or any kind of feeling involved. Any kind of desperation or submissiveness. If it's a pro, she's going to most likely be dominant. She might play the part and enable to be the submissive, but you're not getting what you want out of that. Now, if you want a girl that's going to be performing sex as she knows what the fuck she's doing, then that you do want the sex worker. But if you are willing to take the lower price for a girl that is not experienced and is young, and just for the fact that she is young and she's pretty and she's sexy and she's got a great looking body and that's enough to get you to go ahead and fuck her, then that's what you're going to do. And that's been normally the kind of idea. But Lottie, I'll tell you, she is so much on point with this. She says, I have I've just got a bee in my bonnet that society celebrates women getting a rich boyfriend but talks down to prostitutes for being grotesque. Sugar apps exist in this gray zone saying they don't endorse money transactions. We just said that quote. And it's a arrangement. You have to talk about that. Sugar Baby University. Students signing up with an e, a .edu email addresses were offered free membership and getting an average of $2,400 per month in allowances and gifts. There is a 2022 National Student Money Survey that the UK performed, and they found out that 3% of students had done sex work and 8% would consider it in a cash emergency. And Latham mentions the point that escorting is safer and simpler. I just feel like the idea of not being able to operate as a business. You know, back in ancient Greece, prostitutes had guilds. They were businesswomen in their own right. 
With escorting, I can also check other people's profiles and see what other people are charging. And that's the idea with, you know, different sites. Like there's a lot of sites that do the escort kind of thing and you get the information on them. And actually there's some places that give you reviews. Absolutely. There's a lot of sites that go ahead and do that kind of thing, but we're not going to go ahead and promote those on here. But yes, if you're looking for escorts, you can absolutely go ahead and find them. And you can, in some cases, find re- reviews on them. And, you know, sometimes you're not even looking for an escort that you go in for in-call or out-call. You might just go to a massage parlor in the same way. There are massage parlors that do what's called erotic services. And if you go in there and it says if it's an Asian or a Spanish or, you know, whatever it might be, lady, and the ladies that are in there, and you can tell they're not wearing scrubs, they're not wearing, you know, your normal massage therapy wear, then, you know, they're probably doing something more than just a traditional, standard, therapeutic massage. They're doing erotic, they're doing happy endings, they're doing whatever you want around the world. That's going to go on. So she has a book now called Dear Mr. Andrews. It's a secret diary of a call girl style beach read. And she's calling on arms to decriminalize sex work, considering it's increasingly urgent as the cost of living crisis sees more women signing up as escorts to fewer clients. The prices go down and people can push things like not wearing condoms. Exploitation goes up when there's the need. And she quotes a slogan she once saw on a sex work strike that went through London. And she says, fuck the patriarchy, but not for free. I love that. It's a good line. And so she has that book out there. Dear Mr. Anders, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go look for this lady. Uh, Lottie Latham is her name and it's out now. I can't wait to see this book on audiobook. I want to hear this. I want to hear her and her voice talk about this that would be really fascinating but she brings up so many good points here jail and you know as we close things up to the girls that are out there that are interested in doing this let's be honest here let's get the young lady some real information you know if they're going to come into this the expectations for sex work or or for sexual pleasure they're going to be there if a guy's not asking you for a blowjob or a hand job, or something else where she guys wants full-blown sex. Eventually. Now, maybe, you know, the girl should realize maybe she's going to be able to have a couple of times where she meets the sugar daddy, and he might not ask for sex from her right away, but when the allowance comes in, he starts spending real money on her. She's going to have to expect that there's a good chance this guy's going to want to have sex. If that's, if that's going to be something that comes along, you can't, you shouldn't be doing it. The whole thing is that being a sugar baby the chance of having to have sex with that person is going to happen. And I would recommend highly that most girls, that if they're trying to go ahead and do this, and they think they can get away with not having to have sex, they're wrong. And they're going to get hurt that way too, because that will happen. There's enough of these guys that are on here that already were bad enough trying to meet girls in the first place, because they were their own issues. They, you don't know what's going on with them. They probably have their own problems, which is why they're not with any girl at all. Or they're bitter because of the money they spent on other girls and got nowhere with it, got friends owned or whatever it is. So these guys, sometimes, if they're especially a little bit younger, they're going to come in here and feel like that. The sugar daddy part is if you want the father figure, but you're going to fuck daddy. You're going to have to fuck him because that's what he wants. That's just the way it is. If any girl feels like they want to get into this, be prepared for it. Because that's what you're going to have to do. You have to really ask, ask yourself... What do you think this guy wants you for except for being pretty? It's not just because you're pretty. He can do that with any girl he wants. He can whine and die whoever he wants. But if he likes you, he found you on a sugar daddy site, or if he found you in person. He obviously looked at you in some way where he sees you very attractive and sexual. He wants to fuck. He wants to get down. That's it. Any girl that wants to be a sugar baby, that wants to find a sugar daddy, is coming with sex. You're really not much different than a sex worker, except for the fact that the guy will actually probably care to want to see you again and again, will offer to try to mentor you as one of a daddy figure, because he'll feel the fact that you probably were broken, and you probably have no father figure whatsoever to be there for you to look after you, so it's the daddy you never had, or the daddy daddy you never thought you would have, and maybe the guy just feels sorry for you and wants to make sure that you're going to come out of things better. He doesn't want you just splurging the money. He wants you to say, okay, you know what? Put some money aside. I'm not going to be here forever. Make sure you do something with it. Make sure you do something with your education. Make sure the money goes towards something good instead of just using it on things that are just going to be depreciating as soon as you buy it. Do something with the money that's been given to you. And if you 
want to make this feel like it's not sex work, then have some kind of relationship with the guy. Have some kind of feelings and emotions. Be with the guy because not only is it going to help you, support you, that you are attracted to him, that you find him fascinating, that you have certain qualities about him that make you feel interested in him because of what he does for you, how he makes you feel. Because the right sugar daddy is going to do those things for you, and that's why you want to be with him. And at least you won't feel like a sex worker. J.O., thanks again for being on with us. Really appreciate you taking time out and sharing more of your stories with us. And let's do this again. Thank you. That's the show for tonight. Thanks for listening in. And remember, no matter what, if you are going to be a sugar baby or you decide like Lottie to become a sex worker, you're still in the same place. You're still depraved and debaucherous. 